Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be how the narcissist planned the discard. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please subscribe. So, post-narcissistic relationship, what you will be doing is you will be reviewing the body of the relationship from its inception, from when you met the narcissist until its culmination, which was for this video, let's say that you were discarded. You will be processing that. Now, this is gonna be a really heavy pill to swallow, but it's something you must do. I did it and you need to do it because once you understand that the individual you, are, you were with was a narcissist, what you need to do is you need to A, become educated, B, understand no one's gonna knock on your door and save you, C, really take stock of the body of the relationship and now you can review the red flags that you didn't pay attention to and you can see exactly how certain things unfolded and you will figure out exactly who these people were or who this person was or these little groups of people and you'll, you'll, you'll understand the poor behavior and you will go back in time and review vacations, birthdays, average days, events, holidays. You will review an awful lot of the body of the relationship because you need to. Remember, post-narcissistic relationship, you have to put yourself back together. That's one of the key things you will have to do. Nobody can do the work for you. People can guide you, people can give you tips, people can steer you along the path, but you're gonna have to be the one that's gonna have to go through it. That's just the way it works. And remember, the healing path is not linear. It, we are all on the healing path, headed in the same direction, simply taking different footsteps, but there is no timeline you can place on the healing path post-narcissistic relationship. If anybody tells you otherwise, it's not true. It's not one size fits all. It's completely contingent upon how much work you place into yourself and the time that you place into yourself and the patience and the education that you receive. And you're gonna have to practice radical acceptance. You're gonna have to understand that a lot of your network has weeded themselves out by now, meaning complete, uh, meaning family members perhaps and or alleged friends who turn out to be flying monkeys, etc. There's a lot of work to do post-narcissistic relationship and there will be challenging days and nights and periods of time when you'll think that perhaps it will be too challenging for you to go forward. I'm going to tell you right now, don't quit, don't stop. Continue to move forward, continue to push through it. Each and every day that you invest in yourself post-narcissistic relationship is a day you get stronger. Now, will you have setbacks? Absolutely. Will you have triggers? 100%. Will you understand and learn things about the relationship that you did that you thought were unfathomable? You will. You will become awakened and aware. You will understand that, holy cow, this thing was not even close to what I thought it was. It was nothing but me being an extra in this person's tiny little pea brain Hollywood script. And that's exactly who everybody is in their Hollywood script. They're all extras. Because remember, the narcissist cares about one person, and it's not you. They care about themselves. And for a period of time, which was the length of the relationship, you were in that tiny little movie, and you thought that you were co-starring with them at least a supporting actor or actress, right? No, it's not the case. You were nothing but a form of supply. You were a body double, triple, quadruple. You were just inserted when there was nobody else around, whether you married them or not. It's a fact. And they knew where they placed you. Again, remember, if you profess the magic words to the narcissist that you love them, or if you loaned them a substantial amount of money, or put your name on a loan that they had access to the funds, or you put their name on the mortgage, or your name, however that works, that is when they knew they had you. It's that simple. There is no love in any narcissistic relationship. There can't be because the narcissist can't love. They have no empathy. They care about exclusively themselves and what they can take from you, which again is your resources, time, money, energy, effort, love, empathy, social circle, status, job, network of friends, health, you name it. It goes on and on. But the narcissist, did how they plan the discard, what they do many times, not always, but many times is they watch you Picture an hourglass, if you will, with the sand dripping down from the top of the hourglass going through the tiny little middle of it into the bottom of the hourglass. That is you. That is your life expectancy in a narcissistic relationship. In the beginning, the top of the hourglass is full with the sands of time, and that is you. It represents you. And this is when you have all of the beautiful things the narcissist wants. Your health, your money, your energy, your effort, the ability to travel, to buy things, to make them look good, to be the arm candy to provide a sounding board, even though you didn't know that's what you're doing at the time, to basically pump up the fragile ego. 
and throughout the body of the relationship as those sand particles drip down into the bottom part of the hourglass that was you and your resources becoming depleted literally depleted every once in a while you would have a, a good day or not so, uh, a couple of good days in a row and you would think wow things are getting on track but yet that hourglass hourglass was consistently ticking it was the sands were continuously being dropped to the bottom part of the hourglass now why I say that is because the narcissist was watching you ie the, the hourglass the whole time and you were most likely fighting through physical ailments struggling financially giving to a fault getting weighed down with gaslighting with stonewalling with the silent treatment you most likely were experiencing parts of the smear campaign which you didn't even know what it was because why would you know what a smear campaign is because there's no reason to smear someone's name but that's what the narcissist does and remember throughout this relationship as you got weaker the narcissist got stronger yes that's true why because they were stealing your energy they were stealing everything that made you you and you became an extension of them slowly insidiously but certainly you did and over time as that hourglass hourglass dropped more and more grains of sand in the bottom part you became weaker and weaker and weaker and the narcissist saw this and they knew this and they became more and more unavailable they began to push you more and more and more and any boundary that you had if you had one that was decimated anything that you tried to, to vocalize meaning hey I think we should have an adult conversation about something let's talk about this that would be not listened to any any deadline that would be adhered to or that any any time frame that you wanted to do something in example let's go to a barbecue at five o'clock on Friday that wouldn't be listened to because you wanted to do it ie the narcissist would make sure it didn't happen the narcissist was always trying to tear you down and they watched that hourglass tick 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 slowly getting heavier on the bottom and quickly being depleted on the top they saw this and when they realized that perhaps your physical ailments were too much and or your bank account was now a zero meaning you're now in credit card debt or you don't have the money you had and that you're re you were really isolated because now you don't talk to your family members and you most likely weren't doing the hobbies that you love to do and perhaps not even socializing like you used to in other words you became a shell of yourself you became where the narcissist in the position the narcissist placed you in a zombie like trance like state where you can't do anything and the narcissist did place you there because you believed you were in a loving stable healthy relationship nothing could be further from the truth you were in a cesspool a drowning quicksand like state where the further you went down the less chance of the narcissist to hand you a branch to help you get out of it would happen we know that will never happen because the narcissist doesn't want you ever existing on a high level they want to take from you remember the narcissist believes they're better than you smarter than you that they know more than you that you don't know anything that's what they that's how they look at you and they just wore that mask to manipulate you throughout the body of the relationship now again when the discard happened many times it was when you were at your weakest meaning you didn't have money you had financial issues perhaps you were ill perhaps you just lost your job perhaps it was before your birthday perhaps it was before a holiday perhaps it was on vacation perhaps it was when you had every reason to believe that everything was going great you were on top of the world and maybe you just got a promotion you just bought a house you just got married yes just got married anything could happen perhaps you just had a child perhaps you just relocated perhaps you just started a business when all when any and or all these key events happen that is usually when the narcissist will discard individuals think about your favorite holiday perhaps you were discarded around that time period think about when there's a death in the family and think about during certain periods of time when life was very challenging for you was the narcissist there to to be a support system for you absolutely not they were anywhere but near you if you ever got sick around the narcissist they weren't nursing you back to health they were out looking for your replacement getting other sources of supply and they knew that you were ill so they knew they could pretty much gallivant wherever they wanted to be without being discovered because you can't do anything so that's a whole different video remember don't get sick around the narcissist believe me when I tell you if you are sick and I mean sick sick uh, trust me when I tell you that they look at you in a different way and they will certainly be looking for your replacement but the narcissist when they discarded you was a plan yes I believe it was did they know the exact date and time no but did they narrow it down to a window period of time absolutely why because they watched that hourglass change they watched the top part of the hourglass with all the sand in it drip down into the bottom part and that was you you and your life getting weaker and weaker and weaker and bear this in mind the narcissist needs new shiny objects they need new people with the hourglass full 
That is why they go from person to person, business to business, place to place, relationship to relationship, getting people that don't have the wisdom, that don't have the experience and or the insight on narcissism. In other words, unsuspecting individuals, which at one point was you, and they take from these people. And then when that person either catches on or wises up or ends the relationship, or they, then they get discarded, or it, the point being that relationship ends eventually. And it, it ends and the narcissist goes off into another relationship or relationships. Another thing before I close the video, remember, you may think that the narcissist has one source of supply. Completely untrue. They get supply from a pet, from a house, from a book, from people, from social media, from apps, from a smartphone, from videos. They get it from people, events, food. They get supply from anything. That is exactly why the narcissist can't sit still because they're always on an endless quest looking for the next new shiny object, looking for something to satiate that unquenchable thirst and to fill that bottomless pit of exuberation and excitement. And for a period of time, they thought that was you. You certainly thought it was you. And I will let you know, you are a beautiful individual. You're a bright, shining light. You have so much abundance in you. Believe me when I tell you, post-narcissistic relationship, you can do whatever you want to when you heal properly, when you take the time and put the work into yourself. But if you are discarded, my heart goes out to you. If you are in a relationship with a narcissist, again, my heart goes out to you. If you're in it right now looking to get out of it, my heart goes out to you. If you end it, you're ended it yourself, you are super strong. My heart still goes out to you. Point being, once you get the wisdom and you understand that you can't unsee what you've seen, you can't go backwards. There's no way you could do that. You need to understand that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. And as the thumbnail mentions, the narcissist, did they play in the discard? Absolutely. Trust me when I tell you. It's called kicking a person when they're down. It's called leaving a person crumbled up like a sheet of paper on the freeway, knowing that no one's gonna go pick it up and rescue it and save it. That's what the narcissist did, and that's why they instilled the smear campaign throughout the relationship. That's why they devalued you. That's why they took whatever they could from you, and that's why when the mask slips and you see the blackness in the pupils, you know that the person that you were with wasn't even close to the person you thought they were. They were wearing a mask, manipulating you, tricking you, and taking advantage of you, who was an unsuspecting and naive individual. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon. Stay true, stay blessed. Continue to become awakened and aware and understand you are the priority. You are an amazing individual. If no one told you that today, I am telling you that right now. Continue moving forward each and every day. Know your value, know your worth. Continue on the path. Take the high road. Be the best version of yourself possible. And understand one thing, wherever you are on the planet, you are not alone. God bless you. I love you. You are not alone. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye, you guys.